<laughs> hey, it's Aaron and I'm out here in the blizzarding tundra of uh, Canada. We get winter pretty uh, quickly, obviously. It's Canada, we're at the top of the world. And uh, I'm out here on the range today doing a little bit of shooting, a little bit of practice. Uh, because I think that that's an important thing to do. And I just kind of wanted to make a video today talking about how important it is uh, for every one of you, if you get the chance to actually go out and train yourselves. Now, I've done a lot of videos about how you should be getting together with your family, your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, your comrades, that sort of thing. And uh, making sure that you're able to do things like deliver food to people and uh, providing people with mutual aid. But another very important thing is self-sufficiency, self-sustainability, and being able to protect yourself and the people around you. And one of the ways to do that uh, is to learn how to do a little bit of firearms training and that sort of thing. Obviously, uh, it's not the most important thing, but it is an important thing. One thing that I do want to note is that a lot of people that think that the most important thing is getting firearms training often forget a lot of the little things. They often tend to miss a lot of the little things. For example, they won't get smoke detectors in their houses, even though they're far more likely to uh, end up dying in a fire than they would by, you know, some sort of home invasion or a situation where they need a gun. But that doesn't mean that that sort of thing isn't important. So. A couple of things. First of all, if you want really good information, really good content that talks about firearms and firearms training, I uh, can't stress enough to go check out and subscribe to Tactical Girlfriend. Uh, she does a wonderful job uh, explaining all of the safety, all of the information, all of the things that you need to know so that you can uh, operate firearms safely and in a very intelligent way. And uh, basically, I I'm, I'm just going to give you some very, very basic uh, hints, uh, tips for right now. So I brought out my 22. So, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. So very first thing, first thing that you want to do is, uh, make sure that there are three main factors that you always think about when you are looking at a firearm. The three things that you want to make sure that you're doing, they all have to do with safety. <laughs> it's very obvious. The first thing, rule number one, never point your gun at something that you don't intend to fire at. Uh, always point your gun in the direction of something that you intend to fire at and never point your uh, muzzle at any of your friends. That's rule number one, obviously. Rule number two is try as often as you can until you are actually ready to pull that trigger to not put your finger on that trigger. That's rule number two. And uh, rule number three is uh, kind of a an operational procedure. You want to make sure that whenever you are t uh, packing away, storing, or hauling around your firearm when you aren't ready to fire, uh, you make sure that the safety is on and the magazine is out of the gun. With those three things in mind, those are the first three little rules of safety that you have to keep in mind, um, and they'll help you along your way. The reason why you always make sure that you think about those three things is because if you miss one or two of those things, hopefully one of the other things will actually save you. So, uh, like I said, that's only the first three. There are a hundred different procedures and safety precautions and that sort of thing that you need to think about when you're uh, operating firearms safely, but those are a couple of them. So. Uh, with that being said, I hope y'all have a good weekend, and I guess I'll get a couple of images of me firing my little baby 22. So, like I was saying before, obviously you want to make sure that your safety when you uh, are ready to fire is uh, on. Right now it's off, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and load up my magazine. I'm going to load a chamber, load around into the chamber, sorry. And then I'm going to turn my uh, safety on to fire, and then I'll be ready to go. So, pretty simple. This is a... Uh, Ruger 1022. It's a basic uh, small firearm that a lot of people probably would train with. Um, the reason why I like to use them is because the ammo is extremely cheap and because of Canadian firearms laws. It's just a huge complicated mess to try to do anything with anything else. So I've loaded into the uh, chamber a round. I am now uh, ready to fire. I have the safety off and uh, we'll plug away a couple of shots. My uh, firearm is uh, unloaded, safety is back on, nothing in the chamber. 
All right, so that's pretty much the video. Thank you guys very much for watching and make sure you get out there and you do some uh, training yourselves. Have a nice day. Okay, so uh, before we go, I just wanna talk a little bit about this guy here. This is called an SKS. It's a little bit higher uh, caliber than the one that uh, I was firing. 7.62 by 39 millimeter. It's the same kind of uh, round that you'd see in an AK-47, but it's uh, it's kind of like a boomer fud sort of gun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we got him here in Canada because we can't get anything better. So uh, this is what we are. <laughs> this is what we have to contend with. It's a, it's a pretty decent little, pretty decent little rifle here. So my uh, friend, uh, the darkness, is gonna take a couple of shots for me. Ooh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you do get a chance, check out all the links in the description box below. Hit the little bell button because you know they're not going to tell you when I release a new video and make sure you're subscribed because they're unsubscribing people every single day. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.